Hey guys, what's up? It's AJ back in another video. Today's video, we will be going over whether you should play Hypixel Skyblock in 2022. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Let's get right into the video. So Hypixel Skyblock is not a simple game, and it is not an easy game to get into. There are quite a few different things in this game. It is not just Skyblock by any means, and it is more of an MMORPG game. There are so many different things to do in this game. I will be going through these different parts of the games so that you can make an educated decision on whether you want to give this game a chance. First, when you start playing Hypixel Skyblock, you can start by creating an island. Once you have created an island, you can either invite your friends, if you have any, I assume you don't, or you can just start off on your own, which is perfectly fine, and then you can begin your Hypixel Skyblock journey. Now let's get started by going into the different aspects of the game. One of the most important, if not the most important part of the game, are skills. There are a total of 12 different skills in the game, 9 of these affecting your skill average, while 3 just affecting your cosmetics. I'll be going over the 9 skills that directly affect your attributes in game, and as these are the most important skills in my opinion. To start, farming is a very intricate skill. For starters, it increases your base stat of health. You can also gain higher amounts of farming fortune as you level up, which increases the number of crops you get from each crop you break. You begin leveling up the skill by farming in the main hub, collecting wheat, then eventually moving to the farming islands where you can harvest the other types of uh, collections. Eventually, players tend to build farms on their islands to be able to farm these crops more efficiently. Um, right here is an end game player's island with all the farming layers all built, and this the main reason that players build these farming layers to farm crops on the island is not only the money and skill experience, but also Jacob farm, Farming Contest. Jacob Farming Contests were implemented in the game on November 6th of 2020. Within these contests, you compete against other players to gather as many crops as possible of the specified resource. When your contest is completed, which only takes 20 minutes, you, you will receive a medal correlating to what percentile you place in the competition. The top 60% get a bronze medal, the top 25% get a silver medal, and the top 5% get a, a gold medal. Not only will you receive the medals, you will also receive Jacob's tickets, which can allow you to craft higher tiers of uh, farming equipment. The next skill is mining. This is another in-depth skill. For the base stat increase, you get an increase of defense and mining fortune. You begin mining by mining in the hub, then moving along into the gold mine, then deep caverns, then once you've leveled up high enough, you go to the dwarven mines. This is when mining gets interesting. In the dwarven mines, there is a resource called mithril and titanium. You can mine both of these in the dwarven mines, and it is a new type of resource that allows you to craft new items. New items include picks, which offers higher mining speed, which increases your breaking speed, uh, higher mining fortune, which increases drops from mining blo mine blocks, and breaking power, which determines what resources you can break. While in the Dwarven Mines, you have a new skill tree, which is Heart of the Mountain. This skill tree is leveled by doing commissions in the Dwarven Mines. Commissions consist of breaking 350 mithril ore, mining 10 to 10 titanium, or etc. As you complete these commissions, you get more Heart of the Mountain XP, and eventually you will get to Heart of the Mountain 4, which is where you unlock the Crystal Hollows. Crystal Hollows is the best place to go mining. Here you can mine a new resource which is called gemstone. With this material, you can craft new items that can improve your overall stats. And you can also craft new picks and drills to mine more efficiently in the crystal hollows. The next skill is a lot more simple, which is combat. As you level up combat, you will increase your crit chance, which is very important as it increases your likelihood of hitting a critical hit on your attacks. The other perk it gives is as you level up, you increase your damage by 4% per level. This stat alone can make a huge difference in the amount of damage a player does. Also, some islands, armors, weapons are not unlocked until you have a certain combat level. For example, to be able to go to the end, one of the best islands in the game, you have to be combat level 12. In order to level up the skill, the best way is just to kill mobs. I suggest finding a mob that gives the most experience that you can find and has a consistent amount of these in order to farm experience the quickest, and preferably something that doesn't one-shot you, which is a lot of things towards the beginning of the game. Next up, a very boring skill, which is foraging. The base stat you gain from this skill is strength, which is very important, and you get foraging fortune, which increases the amount of wood you get while breaking down the trees. 
The only way to level it up is just to break trees. There are a few ways to make it more efficient when mining the trees, which can be a jungle axe at the beginning or later in the game, getting a tree capitator along with a monkey pet to maximize efficiency. Even with that, to max the skill to level 50, which is definitely not worth in my opinion, it would take an estimated 200 hours of just breaking wood. Don't do it. On to another painful skill, in my opinion, which is fishing. The base stat that you increase from leveling up your fishing is a health bonus and unlocking new sea creatures that you can fish up. If you have fished in Minecraft, fishing in Hypixel Skyblock is somewhat similar. Besides having bait, having unique fishing rods that increase your catching rate, and sea creatures. So, it's actually quite different. When fishing, you have a sea creature chance which can be improved by wearing uh, special sets of armor, your fishing rod, and what pet you have, which determines the likelihood of catching a sea creature. So don't be surprised when you pull out a mob such as an iron golem, horse, or even a baby zombie on a chicken. The next skill is enchanting. The base stat increase you get is intelligence, which allows you to use ability that certain weapons have. Another huge perk of leveling up enchanting is that you can use more custom enchants. You can unlock many ultimate enchants and the ability to use them as you level up your enchanting skill. This is pretty self-explanatory. You begin by leveling up this by just enchanting your items in a normal enchanting table. Once you reach level 10 in enchanting, you unlock the recipe to craft an experimentation table. With the experimentation table, it allows you to play some mini games, which rewards you with some enchanting XP. You can do these mini games once a day for a good amount of enchanting experience. The next skill is alchemy. This skill gives a stat boost to intelligence and increases the duration of potions that you brew. This skill can be easily leveled by brewing tons of high tier potion, which can cost a lot of money. This skill can be maxed the quickest, but also can cost quite a bit of money to do so. Another skill is taming. This skill gives a stat boost of pet lock, which increases your chances of getting a pet drop from a mob. This skill is leveled from using pets, gaining experience while having pets equipped, and also this skill tends to level up with your character as you progress through the game. The last skill, which is a very huge skill in Hypixel Skyblock, is Dungeoneering. This skill, when leveled, increases how much your stats go up when you enter dungeon. This skill level is split into class level, which are either healer, berserk, mage, tank, and archer, which all have their own class level, and then catacomb level, which is a general experience you gain while completing dungeons. There are seven floors of dungeons, each of them getting significantly harder, and each of those seven floors now have a master mode difficulty, which is exponentially harder than just the normal floors. In dungeons, you complete the floor by clearing out the rooms, by clearing out all the enemies, the mini bosses, doing the trap rooms, completing the different kinds of puzzles that dungeons has, and then moving on to the boss room. The boss room is, is different on each floor. For example, floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four, floor five, floor six, floor seven, all have their own individual bosses. In my opinion, Dungeons is very fun and is a very challenging part of this game. Now that we've gone over skills, I'll go over the other parts of this game. Pets are a huge part of this game. Pets buff stats, which are very important. Pets also buff experience gained in different skills, which can allow your skill grind to become a lot more efficient. Also, if you have collected several different pets, it will increase your pet score, which increases magic find, which will increase your chance of getting rare drops from mobs. Next, Slayers are another part of the game. There are currently four Slayers, which are Revenant, Tarantula, Svens, and Void Masters. They each coordinate with the following mobs. Revenant is Zombies, Tarantula is Spiders, Sven is Wolves, and Void Masters are Endermen. After you complete the Slayers, you gain Stat Boost. The Slayers vary in difficulty from Revenant being the easiest, then Spiders, then Svens, then Void Masters. And Void Masters are significantly more difficult than the others, as they are the most recently added Slayer to the game. Another huge part of the game are Talisman. There are currently 78 Talisman in the game. The Talisman all have a small stat boost they give on their own when held in your inventory. But after reforging the Talisman, it puts another stat boost on them. The Talisman range from costing 1,000 coins to 300 million coins. I would suggest pri prioritizing getting the cheaper Talisman first to buff your stats. To hold the Talisman you want, you will need to get a, a Talisman bag, which is increased by increasing your redstone collection, so I'd suggest placing uh, down redstone minions right away when you first start playing the game. 
which actually leads me to my next point minions minions are a huge part of the game they are passively making money for you you place down the minions they get to work constantly producing the material that the minion is you start off by only being allowed to have five minions work on your island but after you craft many different unique minions you slowly begin to unlock more spots this will increase the passive income that you can make which increases your wealth that you slowly accumulate while playing the game Almost every major MMORPG has something similar to Fairy Souls. Fairy Souls are what players collect to increase their base stats in the game. These Fairy Souls do add up as there are 228 on the map, and each 5 you collect grant you a new stat boost. They are all hidden throughout the map on many different islands. I suggest going to YouTube and looking up a guide on where they all are and trying to find them that way. This will take some time, so be prepared to set aside about 4 hours or so to find them all. Another big part of this game are mayors, so I'm just going to list the mayors. We got Aatrox, Barry, Cole, Diana, Diaz, Foxy, Marina, Paul. The special mayors are Derpy, Jerry, and Scorpius. Each of these mayors all have unique perks that are only active while that mayor is elected. It is very important that you take advantage of the perks that these mayors have, as they can really benefit you. So... Overall, I highly suggest that you give this game a, a proper chance. Start a co-op with some friends, or even start an island by yourself and give the game a go. I suggest just not grinding one part of the game, as it makes it more fun if you play the game more balanced. Spending time and in, in effort into each part of the game. I hope everyone has a fantastic day today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, as it really helps me out. Thanks for again for watching, and have a great day.